Hello, my name is Dennis. I live with Zamanda and I'm here to take you through a quick demonstration of how the Zamanda Management Console or ZMC operates. Um, first of all, a quick overview of Zamanda. Um, this is the backup server here. Uh, it needs to be Linux or Solaris. And uh, we've got X clients, we have Windows clients. Uh, we can back up to NDMP devices, disk storage, tape storage. You can back up Oracle agents, Postgres, uh, basically everything that you see here. So this Amanda Management Console has links that will take you right to the network, to the forums, or to the wiki. It can be very handy when you're trying to figure things out. I will go ahead and log in. We don't need to do that. Oh. First thing you'll see is Zamanda does a quick check on all of the installed files and makes sure that everything is, is still functional. If you do have a corrupted file, you'll notice it here. You need to take corrective action at that point. So generally we'll start with the admin page. This is where you'll start to back up your backup devices, uh, your users. So your users are either administrators or operators. Administrators have access to everything. Operators only to the backups that they create. Uh, backup sets are the largest overriding container that Zamanda uses. Uh, backup sets can consist of many DLEs, which are disk list entries. Um, but the overriding backup set is what you schedule and kick off and run. Um, in this particular situation, we only have two backup sets, a local and a local two. Devices, so man can back up to disks, NAS, SAN, uh, simple storage, cloud storage, um, tape library changers, and NDMP changers. Uh, in this case, we already have two changers set up. This first one here is a local disk. Take a quick look at it. Here we gave it a name, Betzel2. It happens to be in a path to um, var lib amanda vtapes, which is a place that we have a four terabyte disk mounted. Uh, you can set the reserve percentage on it if you need to use that disk for other things. And it'll go and figure out how big the disk is. So in this case, um, it's already set up for us. So we need to cancel there. And let's go ahead and take a look at the changer device. On the changer device, you can ignore all of this up here. This is just Zamanda going through all of the devices on the bus. And when it finds a non-library unit, it complains a little bit. But it's, it's not really anything to be concerned about. Uh, here, this is a storage tech L700 library. And it's at SG15. It's found four drives with 39 slots. You do need to put the capacity of the tape drive in here. In this case, it's LT04. And it's measured in gig ibytes, which is powers of 2 instead of powers of 10. Uh, you can always go to Google and say convert 800 GB. to 800 or to GIB and it'll give you 745 and change. So we can go ahead and cancel that. So those devices are set up. Continuing on. Preferences. This is where you want to set anything that needs to be done. As far as the program is concerned, advanced and audit aren't very useful for us today. Licensing is, tells you what your license allows you to do as far as um, backup clients and, and, uh, and programs and OS types. So now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and go to backup. We're going to test local here. Zamanda is organized in uh, a very logical format. What do you want to back up? Where do you want to back it up? Uh, whether or not you want to use staging, useful for tape drives, not so for disk-based back, backup. 
how would you like to back it up? What, uh, what backup strategy would you like to employ? When, which is the scheduler, uh, the now button just allows you to go ahead and do the backup right now, and the media button lets you select the media that you're going to use. Again, more of a tape type thing and less of a disk type thing. So what are we going to back up? Let's back up something that is from this file system here. Let's say it's uh, host name local, since that's easy. Do a directory path of home. And let's do 5G or 2.5G. Let's do... Five GB two. Don't want to exclude anything. The advanced options here just allow you to go ahead and uh, take averages, um, reliably accurate. It'll guess if it doesn't get back the size of the backup in a in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, you can set the max backup clients if you need to. Here's your backup strategy, which is default. Uh, override, allow both full and incremental backups, skip, do not backup this DLE, never do full backups, only one <clears throat> one level one which is a full backup and then incremental differential from that point. And the last one is never do um, incremental differential, only do full backups. The default is actually a pretty good strategy. What it does is performs one backup, uh, one full backup per uh, disk cycle that you set later on in here and then performs incrementals in between. But if you prefer, you can set it to do only incrementals or only fulls. Um, staging, again, we'll just leave that for, for the time being. It's not going not gonna to make that much difference. And then <coughs> the client application doesn't doesn't really come into the come into play at this point, but we're going to go ahead and add this backup. We've already said we're not going to encrypt it and we're not going to compress it, but if you wanted to, you could. Uh, whether or not to encrypt on the server generally isn't a good idea. Normally what you want to do is allow the tape drive to compress the data for you. If you already have it on the server, there's not much point in compressing it on the server and then sending it to a device that uh, already has a, a very fast hardware compressor built into it. So you just leave that at none and do add. So now we've just added a DL, DLE. And right now it's just Amanda's making sure that it can read that particular location on the, on the file system and it can. So we've successfully